Hello to the Dream Team. Welcome along to this week's show. A Six Nations debrief off the back of the opening weekend and what an opening weekend it was. Would you believe it? Three away wins to mark the first round of the tournament and that is the first time it has ever happened. It did also occur in 97, but that obviously was the Five Nations. We had a thriller at Twickenham. We had a Welsh wobble in Cardiff, Ireland imperious, and we had a very dramatic ending to events in Rome as well, where Italy almost stole France's thunder. Uh, Task and Hins are alongside for the debrief. Welcome to both of you. It's great to be here. Why are you looking quite so smart today? We've gone for a sort of crisp. Um, so I Gino. had to pop off. We had a meeting earlier, but then I had to pop off to... Uh, <laughs> the Queen's Gallery to I attended Donk. a lecture on Donk. So Japanese, we'll up as we uh, go. Japanese ceramics actually. Right. Yeah. You've, changed. You've changed. You have changed. You've changed. It's fascinating. Now there's a there's a friend who I was helping out who's going to do three months in Kyoto studying um studying ceramics and as ISPS handler. You think people were bored by my opening salvo? Well, I don't really. They've heard it already. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I'll lock in so sweet, but I... Anyway, I, I know some people in Japan, so I asked if they could help him when he's out there, and it turns out they were doing this show today, so I took him along to that. Uh, by the way, Andrea from Hello, welcome. Uh, she's also started her own podcast. Has she? Yeah. Andrea from Hello? Yeah. Inspired by us. What's it called? Do you think... We, have you been asked on? Uh, Can we all go together? I, I think... I did get asked on. I sort of declined very politely. She comes on here... We we cannot. Why don't you come on here? We'll grill her about like what's it like in the celeb media world. Like okay. she's always like investigating other people and checking stuff out. Yeah, let's leave that for another day. Let's talk Calcutta Cup uh, for now. We were there on Saturday. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we were. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Thoughts. Debrief. Well, I mean, I, well, I thought the food was delightful. Tom Kerridge very kindly let us come up to. Um, one of the private, more exclusive areas of Twickenham that I hadn't been before. And we had uh, chicken stuffed with haggis. Very good, it was. Uh, There's a reason why you haggis. haven't been to those yeah. upper echelons. Yes, of the very RFU. true. Very true. Um, went up there, we had Joy to Guinness. Wayne, we saw Wayne Barnes, saw yep. Lewis Moody. Yep. Had some real good debrief chats, watched a bit of the game. We, we did our live room. I'd say we've had better audiences. Yep. They were. They took a little while to warm up. I think there's something in that though, and we're going to come on to that. Oh, okay. I think I just think there's something. There's something at the moment where the gears are crunching, yes. and I think that was apparent from the very start of the day. Yes, I agree. I agree. But otherwise, I actually thought it was a good game. I thought rugby was definitely the winner on that occasion. <laughs> That's your new thing. It's your answer to everything yeah. now. Isn't I just. It? I just thought the boys. I thought both teams played very well. It's exciting. Um, Dwayne, Duhan. Van der Mcverver, or whatever the most Scottish Swerver, <laughs> Swerver, like the most Scottish African Love the ever fact that he from was the Outer so... Hebrides, about twenty thousand miles out of the Hebrides, <laughs> um, <laughs> but was unbelievable. I think he was even shocked, wasn't he, that he swerved? Yeah. He yeah. was like, that's not what I'm known yeah. for. It's like an oil tanker trying to turn, isn't it? But he just did it. But he was incredible. Uh, I thought it was just a good game. Just, you know, I think it, we shouldn't be too disappointed. All in all, it was good. Fun. Good. I love your positivity. Yeah. Let's bring in a man who no doubt was extremely excited by what he saw. Uh, first things first, it's 2 a.m. where he is in Japan. Welcome to Le Petit General. Oh, actually, Konnichiwa. Greg Laidlaw, how are you? I know that normally 2 a.m. is is sort of fairly usual bedtime for you post Calcutta Cup. Have you had the tie around the head again or have you just <laughs> um, celebrated quietly with a sake or two? Yeah, slightly quiet this time around, mate. Um, but uh, brilliant to watch the, the boys perform uh, on the weekend. And I'm sure I'm sure Finn was trying to uh, replicate uh, some, of the, some of the evening from a few years back. I loved it. There was some very good post-match photography with Finn busting out some fairly... Urban what, hand gang gestures, signs. yeah, gang signs in the Calcutta <laughs> Cup trigger. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, how are you? First, we'll obviously talk all things Calcutta Cup. But how are you? How are you getting on over there? What are you doing other than cashing in a lot? <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm very well, thank you very much, Alex. Um, the ends uh, plummeted a little bit from when I first signed here, which isn't so great, <laughs> but these things happen. Uh, now, mate, we're we're busy enjoying life. Um, still running around a little bit. Uh, we've got a, a new five month old. Uh, little baby boy as well, so that's keeping us busy. But uh, all in all, very well, thanks. Hask's got a lovely little girl for for a future uh, little the petty general. Yeah, imagine to, that. Uh, Adrian link up to meet up to <laughs> two rugby dynasties coming together. I'm just going to say that she, 
Yeah, I think the, the little pants of general might be shitting in pants by the time that your daughter arrives at an acceptable <laughs> level yeah, if yeah, he's grown up anything like you. She, she looks like me in a wig. That's going to be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> She'll like, be like Penny Lancaster and Rod Stewart. She'll be so much taller. Right. Oi, ba- um, Bodie Laidlaw. It's got a ring to it. Has, yeah, it has. Nah, do you want to, we can, we'll see. What, it depends if your kid's good looking because if he's not, he's not good enough for my daughter. But anyway, <laughs> we'll cross that bridge. Can we get back to Saturday? I mean, I don't, you, you, you're getting the gist of this podcast quite quickly. We don't talk a lot about it, but I am genuinely fascinated Pick, give us the picture. Where were you watching on Saturday? Did you get up bright and early? What was the kind of the, the, the lie of the land for you? Yeah, I got up uh, in the middle of the night, just just at home. Um, obviously tuned in. Um, yeah, and that, that was about it. So just watched it on my own, really. So it was a, a fantastic result from Scottish perspective, obviously. But I did think, um, as Hax said, it was a great game of rugby, wasn't it? I think uh, both teams had a, a pretty good attitude towards the game. Um, and in Scotland, to be fair to them, and scored an incredible try in 70 odd minutes to, to take the game away from England. Fundamentally, you know, this has happened for for Scotland before. We always talk about it: the fact that they've won the first game, they're on for a Grand Slam, they beat in England. Um, I think it's it's obviously become a thing with the lads and with Gregor now because he's already said it's been mentioned in the changing room straight after. They've got Wales again, which where they've been numerous times and let themselves down after that first win. Obviously, Wales got a little bit of a tickling. Probably not as bad as the scoreline suggests, is what I, I would say. Do you think they can overcome what is now their biggest hurdle? I think they can this time around, Tins, to be fair. And it, it was interesting after the after the victory on the weekend, you know, obviously some of the players are already talking about, you know, we've got to back it up. So I think it's at the forefront of, of their minds. And, you know, certainly from speaking to some of the boys in the, in the squad, that's it's a big progression they want to, to look at this season. And I, and I truly believe this time around that they can do it. I think they're in a... You know what it's like. It takes time to to, to build trust, build confidence. And, and I really think the team are playing with that at the minute and not just against England. You know, going back to Murrayfield this weekend, I think it's going to be huge. As you mentioned, Wales probably struggled at the weekend and, and they've got a, a few issues going on themselves. So... You know, I, I would expect Scotland, as long as they perform this weekend, and that's what they just need to worry about. Worry about a performance. If they do that, I think they're good enough to win against Wales at, at home. Craig, were you aware when you were playing for Scotland that there was kind of this bit of a bogey around the Six Nations not winning, you know, two games in a row at the start? Was it something you guys talked about? How how do you try and avoid that when everyone sort of... Re- you know, reminds you reminds of, it. of it. Yeah, and also the fact is that you, you can say, look, we need to back it up. But it's that's not, you know, that's just... That's not like doing anything, is it? It's like when you start slow in the, in, a, in a game, you've got to go, well, I'm going to train harder this week. It's all going to be better. It's like, yeah, you haven't actually changed anything. You've just said the same thing. So were you aware of it? And what do you think they need to do? Like, how the hell do you get over that curse? Yeah, we were certainly aware of it as players. And, you know, certainly, you know, my, my generation would probably struggle to to just get over it. I think I think Greg has obviously been in, in the job a long time now. And, and I think you're really starting to see the, the, the way they train probably more so come through in, in the way they're performing um so I, I really believe they just have to stick to their guns and you know even on the weekend i thought scotland really took the game uh, towards england and, and it's just that confidence in, in my opinion of the team and just saying look this is our dna let's just stick to what what we do um and, and keep doing it and and as long as they get that performance, and that's what they've got to worry about. Don't worry about the result. Stick to the process. If they do that, I, I truly believe they can win this weekend. Because uh, probably in the, in the last couple of seasons, it's it's been slightly different things. It's let them down, discipline, things like that. Uh, but as you saw from the weekend, again, good enough rugby team. They've just got to back each other, have confidence, uh, and they can get over the line. I don't think many in the sort of the final wash-up w- would in any way shape or form say that Scotland didn't deserve to win. I think they probably were yeah, on the balance to play the better team. I mean, some remarkable stats, 29 points, but only 30% possession, which I think is is remarkable. We're going to get into some of the sort of the detail with you, but when you look back now, Greg, what are the bits that really leapt out? What were the bits you, you really enjoyed from a Scotland perspective? And and I suppose the areas that you think they've made most progress. Oh, it's interesting. I was thinking about this, uh, Alex, and I watched the game back a couple of times and I think that Probably the, the depth in the squad obviously is a big one, and and for me, you look at all good teams. There's, there's always like a few sort of unsung heroes and people you don't talk about as much, 
and, and Scott, you're probably starting to see that a little bit more with Scotland, whether it's uh, Schumann on, on the loose head or, or, well, the whole front row actually from the weekend. Um, you know, George Turner was incredible. You know, VP Nell, everybody was worried a little bit about Xander not playing, but, you know, VP Nell was excellent. And, and almost the resur not the resurgence, but the, you know, Richie Gray is obviously back in the team. And, and for me, he's always been somebody who's been, he's been a test match rugby player and somebody we've probably missed uh, over, over the, in the last couple of years. So I think you add their players into the mix and you look at the way they're playing, they're just going about and they're doing their job. But I guess in, in the DNA of, of how Scotland play, you saw that with, with Richie's last uh, you know, little catch and pass uh, onto Matt Ferguson, who again, he was outstanding. And you know he doesn't do too much on the ball at the end there, Matt Ferguson, he just catches passes. 27 tackles he made. That's remarkable. You know what I'm trying to get. I guess you know a lot of people talk about Finn and uh, Hoggy Dua, and obviously they, they were good as well. But you know the, the boys in around doing the nuts and bolts, they're doing them extremely well, and, and allowing the uh, our flair players to you know either get their hands on the ball or find a bit of space. Um, I was going to say, obviously, two hundred. Well, depending on where you read your stats from, two hundred and twenty-five to two hundred and fifty tackles that Scotland made. How is that going to affect how the bodies feel? Is he is Gregor talked straight afterwards about he's going to have to see who he, whether he has to make changes. You talked about VP Nell and whether I think they're saying that Xander Fagerson could be fit, so he might come in. Is he is that going to take a too big a toll? If the and will Gregor give them the time to rest if they are all that tired uh, just to make sure they're ready to go next week? Well, I certainly hope so. I think that's uh, I think that's been some of the journey, I guess, and then maybe Gregor's uh, coaching with Scotland as well. We, I, I remember we used to have to work fairly hard on a Monday morning, we'll put it that way, uh, tins back in, back in Maddy anyway, and I think some of the big boys always struggled with that, so, you know, hopefully they're going to have a, a bit of a light week, and potentially they might make a few changes in around uh, that tight head slot. I, th I think Xander was fairly close to being fit uh, for last weekend, so potentially he might come in and start, you know, VP Nell can probably come on and then finish the game, so... I, it's just about being smart now, isn't it? You boys will know from playing in, in the Six Nations, once you, you certainly when you start the tournament well, make sure you get, you get back, get their feet on the ground. And, you know, Scottish boys, they'll be very much, that'll be, as I mentioned before, at the forefront of their mind because they want to try and, you know, uh, get the monkey off their back um, and, you know, and get, and get another victory and start with two from two. How impressed were you with um, Stuart's, hog ta Stuart's Hog's tan? Because I've never seen a man look so he proud. Probably he, been tangoed. He was he? very. He was looking very. I know he's got his new lid. He's got his new teeth. I'm all about that life. I'm going to be following <laughs> suit. But that tan. What part of Scotland is he getting that tan from? Because that is insane. Well, I mean, that, it's the Cornish coast now, isn't he? Well, that's what I was going to say. Tins a few questions. How, how sunny is it down in uh, down in Exeter, mate? Uh, that's for sure. I'm, I'm guessing he's probably going to try and claim that they were out in Spain for a week there just before the Six Nations started. So he's probably going to try and claim that, mate. But I'm not. I'm not having it. He's had the coconut oil I, on, I did I send him a, I sent him a, a well done message after the game, and then, a, but with a picture of his ridiculous lid, one of these pictures I found of his ridiculous lid. I was like, mate, <laughs> you've gone from one extreme where it's dusty up top to being the absolute looking shite the other way. He goes, I know, I need to sort it out. I'm, going, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to have that problem. Do you know what I mean? Too much hair. Too much hair, like yeah. going, oh, God, I actually look shit before, and now you look even shitter again. I'll be like, will I? <laughs> I'll have it like beaded, and I'll be like whipping people in the face with it. <laughs> like be dangling in everyone's food and shit. I can't and wait to have that. There's some very good social media content to be had with you, oh, yeah. you with various new hairstyles. Yes. Let's leave that for another day, though. Can I, I want to ask you about your old muck of thin as well, because th there's so much attention on him. I... I I think he I think he missed the one defeat to England. Am I right in that? I think his record against England is absolutely extraordinary at the moment. He's won five on the bounce, I think, and that draw, obviously, the 38-all draw. I mean, it wasn't perfect on Saturday by any means. I mean, there were a couple of kicks that went out, et cetera, et cetera. But when it matters, his it's just master of the, of the arts is is quite something to watch. Did did you did you see a man who really is entering? not just sort of the prime of his career, but a real comfort with who he is out there and, and what he's doing. Yeah, it's it's brilliant to see. I think it's it's almost came full circle, isn't it? And I think in terms of, you know, the way Finn is as a as a person, as a, as a player, and he, in many ways you can almost see Gregor's starting to embrace that because, you know, and that's when you, when you want Finn to be is, is just being himself. And it was interesting. Obviously, England tried to get stuck into him at the weekend, but, you know, it doesn't bother him at all. He almost sort of drives him on, and England probably stepped out of line a couple of times at the weekend. And he just, I think, and that's the 
almost a maturity in Finn's game now. It's awesome to see him play. Sometimes he just catches and passes, distributes the ball. Sometimes he'll try and keep pushing the boundaries, but but other times he'll play that sort of percentage uh, game. And then, you know, you look at him at the end, he's <laughs> he's obviously a slightly different character from everybody else. But you know, that, that's why we love him. And he's you know, these are the great characters in the game, and we're, we're very fortunate he's, he's Scottish. Is he genuinely as quirky as people sort of might see, or is he is that just a sort of a perception thing? No, I mean, he's, he's, he's definitely out there. I remember once being on being on tour somewhere, um, and we, we, I think we just rocked up of a long flight or whatever, and he managed to find this bike out of somewhere. And he just he was just like cycling around the team room with this random bike and this random helmet uh, that, that he found. So he's, he's certainly a character. But so he's... basically, you're telling me he's a thief, also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, potentially, but but he's he's a, he's a heck of a character. He's he's a great team man. Uh, and uh, it's brilliant to see him back enjoying himself in, in a Scottish jersey. We we, um, we interviewed um, John Barkley before the game. Great guy, and he was he was talking about um, when he was captain that uh, when Finn Russell did obviously that miracle pass. I think in the draw in the draw. Um, no, it wasn't. Yeah, it's the, that it's was Scott winning beat, away. Sorry, yeah, winning yeah. away. Whatever. W- uh, in, in that game, he basically went, as he threw it, he was like no, and then obviously it came off, and it, and it, and Finn came up to him. What were you saying? Uh, he goes, I, I said, no, don't pass. He goes, listen, cap, you might be captain, but shut the fuck up and let me do my job. And he and John Bartley was like, look, you've just got to let that happen. Do you think um, the players in the squad now have faith in him that, and, and they've kind of got that relaxed uh, confidence that he's going to be able to deliver and they just back him and let him be quirky, let him do whatever he's going to do as long as he turns up? Yeah, and that, the, the, the players definitely all back, back him has for sure. And I think you look at him defensively as well. Everybody always talks about, you know, his, his flair and his stuff. He's he's so gritty in defence. He gets stuck in for the team and he's willing to roll his sleeves up, you know, when time gets times get hard. And I think, you know, a lot of people sort of gloss over that in many ways. They don't talk about it. He's, he's a real team man. Uh, you know, all the boys love him. And, and the, the, I guess in many ways they've come to understand him. And, and, you know, just let him get on. And, you know, that was one of the great things about me playing with him is sometimes you'd, you know, say, Finn, maybe don't give you the ball here. And then other times you just got to understand when to give him it and, and let him do his thing. And I think the team are really, uh, really helping him as well to, in many ways to, to express himself also. Do you think it's helping him having Tupelotu, a player like that, outside him in terms of just confidence that if there isn't anything on, he's got... He's got a bit of a bang. Obviously, Hugh Jones played his role and he seems to score all the time against England. But to have someone who's on the form that Tupelotto is, but then is prepared to just be that sweep if there's nothing on, he knows he's got a little safety net. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, I think, you know, it's, it's, if it's heavy traffic, you know, you can just offload the ball. And I think that's his, you know, I, I talked about, you know, he's, I guess, in many ways, maturing in his game as, as he gets older. And sometimes just that ability just to distribute and, and let other people, you know, do their thing. And I think probably, again, is kind of that dovetail effect. You know, you know, Finn probably, he wasn't, at, he didn't have his best game in the world at the weekend. He was very good. Uh, but you, we've got other players now in and around, whether that's, you know, Duhan was obviously incredible at the weekend with, with both of his tries. Uh, you've got players in and around him. Hugh Jones played well again in the weekend. Even Kyle Stane, you know, he had a couple of big moments. And it's just players in and around him, you know, taking that pressure off in many ways, Finn. You know, just allowing him to execute the simple things well. And then, and then he obviously chips in with, with a couple of brilliant things along the way as well. I was going to say, do you, do you think that's going to be the key with Scotland, the not having the reliance on the superstars, but actually going, look, you know, when it's when it's time, they'll they'll turn it on. But actually, we need to support them and all sort of stand up because that seems to be or will be the key, I think, for Scotland's success if people do take the responsibilities. You're not just mentioning the same old names like Hogg and Russell at the end of the game where you're talking about eight or nine other players. No, definitely, that's that's. That's a huge part of it, Haskin. I think a huge part of taking that step forward as well is is, is everybody stepping up in, in many ways. Again, I thought, you know, somebody I've, I've not mentioned yet, Ben White, I think he was excellent on the weekend. Again, he, he sort of worked really well with Finney. He, you know, for somebody who's probably not started um, a huge amount of times, um, you know, for Scotland, I think he, he kicked well, he took pressure off, and he, and he sort of took a hold of the game in many ways himself. Um, so, you know, him going forward is going to be crucial um, as well, so I think you know, going back to Murrayfield, it's going to be definitely exciting this weekend. It's it's interesting actually because it, it's quite hard. Well, actually, I was going to put it the way you, you can you can see a lot from Scotland at the moment. You guys all right? Yeah, just touching. Okay. What I was going to say before the other two have a little cuddle is that 
th th there's been a noticeable step up across the board for Scotland, but also you then mentioned Duhan Muxwerva. I mean, I I've never seen a player in dark blue other than your good self who has <laughs> produced quite so much X factor. I mean, I think even back to Ivan Tukolo, King Kenny Logan. I mean, they didn't quite have what Duhan had. Just give us a little sense of, I suppose, the fact that you've now got a, like a proper box office player who is able to kind of change games in the way he did. And you, you've got to, you've got to give us your debrief on that try as well. Yeah, well, it was just, well, it was incredible. I think you know, Duhan is. He's got so much speed, power, and you can almost see and in, in teams like s stepping off him. You know what I mean? S holding back, giving him a bit of space to run in there. And and my goodness, what a what an incredible try that was! It's, it's probably one of the best Scotland tries that have, that have been in history, certainly in the Calcutta Cup game. Um, and England again probably just stood off him, gave him that time and space, and 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 he took it. And even his second try as well, the, just his ability to cut back in, use his speed and his power to get over. There was still a fair bit of finishing uh, to be done uh, from that side. Yeah, he's an incredible asset for Scotland, and I think they they use him in in the right way, try and get him, you know, with, with his uh, hands on the ball, time and space, and he and he's so destructive. Do, do you think he's um? I think he's got better since that that, that Lions tour. I yeah, don't know what your agree. opinion is because I, I look. I don't think he probably got a little bit exposed on that Lions tour at times, um, and I wondered how he was going to kick on post that because obviously you can see he's a quality player. He seems like a really good guy as well. But I was wondering, you know, sometimes you go on a Lions tour, and it can be a blessing. Sometimes it can be a bit of a curse if you if you don't perform in that whole tour. You know, lot, lots of people sort of didn't really stand up, and he was probably fell short a little bit. Have you know, have you sort of seen the, the, the kick on? Because he seems now to be in a completely different place and actually sort of really kind of growing into his talent. It's worth bearing in mind as well. He's also been to Worcester, gone out of business there, gone back to Edinburgh. I mean, his, his, his journey has sort of, it's been quite turbulent recently, but whatever he's doing is is working. Yeah, it is. And I think in many ways, the way the way Scotland set up to play the game, you look at that, go back to that Lions tour, um, and crikey, it was hard to watch, wasn't it? It was pretty turgid at times, you know, chasing box kicks, and, and many, you know, it is difficult to play against a team like South Africa, but I think the way Scotland set up uh, their, their team to play that attractive rugby, get the ball, move the ball around the field, you know, whether that's through the forwards and get them into open space, and that tour, in many ways, just didn't really suit him. He had to do a lot of defending, and, and you don't want to do I'm doing too much defending. Let's be honest, you want him ball in hand, running at people and, and doing what he does best, like, like he was on the weekend. And once he's in that sort of form, he's, he's one of the best wingers in the world, certainly going forward. Did you notice um, at the end of the game, you know, when, when, when we've played Scotland before and we've lost, the Scots, to be fair, have celebrated as if they'd won a World Cup at times, because everyone hates the English, we're well aware of that. But actually, at the end of this game, it was kind of... You know, business as usual. I know. I know. Stuart Bloody Hogg is was, business as usual. Five Hogg wins going, and six. Yeah, that's what I mean. But for Stuart Hogg was going mental. But the lads seemed to be just like, you know, fair enough. This is what we do now. We come to Twicken and we ruin the party. Fuck you. I think that's a really kind of interesting point for psychological. Yeah. Do, did you feel that? Like, do, does that is that kind of what's going on in Scotland at the moment? Yeah, I did get that impression, and uh, this time around, Hask for sure. And I think probably some of it's coming maybe from uh, Jamie Ritchie. Uh, he's obviously a young captain and. And the way he sort of holds himself, he you know, he's quite calm. He doesn't get too excited. Um, you know, he's he's obviously really happy and stuff. We won at the weekend, but he's very much he's very driven. He's very calm, and I, and I think that comes across it in the way, that certainly the way Scotland's probably celebrated, but the, the way they performed in the game and in the closing minutes, they were very calm in control. Even though they were they were still playing rugby, I think you know near the end of the game they they chucked another one of the overthrow lineouts. Um, so you know you can just see they're in control of their game and and they had that calmness and, and uh, as I said before that I think the players are well aware of of, of what they want to do and and I think they're willing to, to step up this time around. What did your mother-in-law have to say off the back of it? Oh yeah, well I had her on speed dial when we were when we were twenty points to twelve, 12 up or whatever it was, and then I yeah sort of deleted that. Who <laughs> dis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. After I think she would have been over the moon. I haven't actually spoke to her yet on on purpose. I purposely <laughs> avoided that. So, um, but I think you know, giving there's nothing as much as she probably hated giving me the Calcutta Cup. There's probably nothing that she prefers more than giving out the Calcutta Cup at, to a Scottish captain at, at Twickenham. At Twickenham to Jamie Ritchie. So, um, yeah, she'll be very happy. She, did, she had a cool pair of shades on. <laughs> she, probably the British Olympic Committee, she always wears those. Right. Looking <laughs> stylish. Yeah. Um, can I ask you, Greg, on your view on England, 
at the moment. I'm always, you, know, you can go wherever you like with it. But when you see this England team right now, what are you, what are you looking at, do you think? Well, I felt they did play better at the weekend. Uh, you could you could see their, their mindset in many ways to shift the ball. And I think after Scotland started so well in the game, you know, I was probably worried at one point after Ellis Gaines uh, scored just after, uh, you know, and I think it was in the second half and they got out to that 20 points to 12 uh, lead. You know, I, I was starting to worry a little bit. And, uh, you know, I guess in many ways, the England we've, we've feared over the last, uh, you know, number of years are starting to come back. But... And then they just go and make a bit of an error, I think, off, off the kickoff. And, and in the past, probably not seen that as much uh, from England teams. Um, so And I think it, they're probably going to have to get that balance right. You know, Tins talked about two Pilaru for Scotland, that big ball carrying 12. And, uh, you know, whether England obviously had a few injuries going into the game. Uh, but they, they had some good performances as well. I think uh, the guy, Oli Chesham, he really impressed me, uh, you know, from the weekend. So... Um, you know, whether they're, they're going to look at uh, somebody like Simmons, is he still available to, to come in uh, uh, England at the, at yeah. the minute? He's in the squad, yeah. He's in yeah, the squad. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, in, the he's squad. in the squad. I think he's a dynamic carrier. He's, he's a bit, he's, he's destructive. I like Ben Earl as well. And, and I've always said that England have, have got quality players, you know, right throughout their squad. They've got strength and depth. And, well, and I think in many ways, if, if certainly from Scottish perspective, we, we got England pub, probably at the right time at the moment before, uh, you know, Steve and the rest of the coaching staff can, can really get a hold of them. Okay, we're going to pick up and deep dive into England in a bit more detail um, sort of shortly. But I suppose the question is, and we've, we've touched on it a little bit, but Scotland have flattered to deceive. They've had these big wins in the past and they've not been able to kick on now. We've got seven months to go until a World Cup. What makes you believe that this time the backup is coming, so to speak? What makes me believe that in many ways, again, the performance from the weekend, because you know, time and again now we've backed it up, and, and that just doesn't it, that doesn't happen by chance. You know, I think that that's constructed. I think you could see the game plan was well thought out. We had a few overthrows in the line out, um, and uh, in many ways, I, I get excited by by how the game went in the weekend. In terms, of we were twenty points to twelve down. The way we were able to just stay calm uh, when, when you're under pressure. And, and I think we've got a couple of different ways of playing. We've got that pragmatic style. Where, you know, I think we talked about the, the the possession, the territory earlier on. Scotland never had a huge amount of that, but their, their ability to just stay in games, not panic. England kicked a lot to us early in the game, but don't panic, don't run it back, kick it back down there. And so we've got that, that side of our game as well, as well as the sort of flair side and, and the ability to break teams down with, with our excellent interplay between forwards and backs. So that gives me the confidence that we can we can go on and push on. What's uh, what's an acceptable result out of this Six Nations? Good question. For Scotland. Now. Right now, in this position, obviously, we know how important Saturday is. Then they roll straight into <laughs> Paris. Um, <laughs> Oops. But realistically, going into that World Cup, what, what, is accept what should be acceptable now for for Scotland in the position that they're in. Basically, is Scotland going to win the World Cup now they're beating England at Twickenham? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, of course. I was asked that a couple, um, you know, a week or so ago, tens before the start of the tournament. And, you know, I talked about that, I guess that middle slot, that, that third, fourth spot. Um, I, th I think looking at it now after the weekend, uh, still that third spot is a, is a good result, um, you know, for Scotland because our island and France out in front by a, by a bit, I, I think they are. Um, yeah, having said that, you know, Scotland have actually caused France a lot of problems uh, when, we've, when we've played them recently as well, and I don't think the French will be looking forward to playing us. So first and foremost, yeah, I know the boys will be focused on, on Wales this weekend, and, and that's what we've got to do. It's, it's a little bit boring, I know, but you know, take one game at a time, get back to Murrayfield if we can beat Wales, and then we're going to have a huge amount of confidence going into that French game, and obviously Ireland... Um, France are away to Ireland this weekend so it's, an, it's going to be an incredible weekend of rugby and if Scotland can get up against Wales you know it's going to, it's going to be an absolute belter over in, uh, over in Paris in a few weeks time I'm conscious it's now 2.30 in the morning in Japan you've done unbelievable you're, you're actually more awake than Hask is and it's, uh, it's tea time here so well done on that just give us a little sense G give us how life is out there I mean what are the bits you're loving off the pitch are you getting to sort of see a bit of Japan and, and, and tour around a bit or is it very much rugby five month old get the job done and um, see where we, are, we where we are at the end of the season. 
No, I mean, the, the rugby is obviously uh, important, uh, mate, but we're, uh, we've been able to enjoy a few things off the field and explore Japan a little bit now that the things have opened back up, thankfully. Uh, kind of COVID's on the way down, hopefully. So, we've, yeah, we've done a bit of skiing. We've, we've been down to one of the, the islands uh, in the south of Japan. We've seen the traditional part in Kyoto and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's an incredible country with incredible people. And, yeah, the, the family are enjoying it. So we're, uh, we're having a, a fair bit of fun. And finally, before we let you go, um, obviously being a very alcohol pro <laughs> podcast that we have with our own gin, I know that you've got the, give us the updates on the whiskey. How's it going? How's the build going? How's everything else going? Yeah, so Wolf Creek uh, Distillery, it's uh, it's exciting times. We're um, still going through some of the planning permission in, in Scotland uh, tins, but we um, uh, the first uh, blend is, is, is just about to be released. Um, that's been blended up by uh, Master uh, Blender back in Scotland there. So very exciting. I've been I've uh, got involved with with the team probably about a year ago now. We're going to be based just uh, just outside of Stirling, uh, and we're actually going to launch uh, in Japan uh, as well at the, at the end of March. So we've got a, a launch to the team from Scotland are coming out. So um, alongside the rugby, I've been uh, I've been fairly busy with some of the whiskey stuff, which which has been awesome. And it's obviously a massive uh, massive part of Scottish Scotland, mate. And um, you know, as you said, I think Hask likes his uh, whiskey as well. I love what it wasn't just the yen. It, it wasn't, wasn't just the, the family social side. It was laying the foundations for one of the will, biggest whiskey markets out there. Will you be getting the celebratory video footage of you singing Flower of Scotland with your shirt ripped and your tie around your head as part of the marketing <laughs> marketing material? Or has that been buried and uh, won't be being front and centre in Japan? No, I don't think the Japanese will maybe understand that one quite as much, Alex. So we'll maybe leave that one out for the, for the time being. Well, I, well, actually... I don't know. We've seen it on that. a few nights out. Yeah, that's you very know true. Better than anyone in japan what goes on a night out stays on a night out that is one of the beautiful parts of the culture so you can be sick <laughs> on someone and they just not talk about it the next day yeah. well i mean it's, it's funny when we have a a bit of a team social or whatever that the boys go absolutely mental like you're talking like two hours in and and boys are normally spewing all over the place and and getting carried, <laughs> carried off home um so it's, it's an incredible culture as you say they, they work hard but they, they certainly like to uh, to have a bit of fun along the side as well but no one talks about it the next day, do they? Like, if you came in, you were like, fucking hell, do you see what you did? Like, you know, they're like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, yeah, yeah, you did. Do you remember that? You know, and they're like, no, it wasn't me. You're like, I just don't understand it. I mean, over here, if you do anything, you have to relive it on social media. You have to be reminded of it. But over there, it's just gloss, it's just brushed under the carpet, isn't it? Just imagine if Hass couldn't tell a story. It'd be, our world would be so much better. No. <laughs> but we wouldn't have a podcast that's really successful either. So swings and roundabouts. <laughs> swings and roundabouts. <laughs> Listen, Greg, thank you. We're going to let you go to bed because I'm conscious. Um, a, I, I, have you tucked this in as sort of I'm doing the night feed in inverted He's combos? He's in the clubhouse. Or, He's in the clubhouse. Are you? Yeah, mate. The clubhouse is two minutes from the house. So um, I, I just popped along ah. here. I thought you were um, in a prison cell. Yeah, exactly. yeah exactly. So I said. It was like, lovely what you've done with the yeah, artwork and the decor behind It's not exactly Tokyo you. skyline, Classic is it? Classic Scottish bloke hasn't spent any of the yen on anything. It's all under the mattress. <laughs> Minimal minimalist. I've actually not got any internet in the house, so I had to come along here. Greg, thank you so much for dialing in. Come and see us properly when you're back. and uh, we'll Bring swap some of that whiskey. Yeah, if, we'll don't, if you don't bring the whiskey, don't bother turning yeah, up. Thanks. <laughs> we'll swap the whiskey for, so for a bottle of black I eye. did say we'd accept some and we'd give it a little nod. Yeah, give it a oh, yeah. If it's yeah. any good, if it tastes yeah. like cat piss, uh, uh, then we're going to hammer it. If it's good, any good, we'll, we'll Good we'll water and it. sterling as well for the Is blending. It? Yeah. I love a blend. Listen, I love a whiskey. I'm very excited about that. I'm quite jealous, actually, as well. Okay, well, maybe we'll black eye whiskey. Good on you. Thank you very much for dialing in. It's been actually really nice to have a proper debrief on Scotland because yeah. we haven't done that for a while. So very good to get your thoughts. Back to cheers, bed. Man. Look after yourself. We'll see you soon. All the best. Take care, Thank mate. you so cheers, much. Guys. Cheers, cheers. I've, I've actually really enjoyed that. We don't talk enough about Scotland. Of course you're a and you really love a debrief, but yeah. Okay, have you enjoyed talking about Scotland? Yeah, no, I, but I think Greg does it very well as well. He does well. it very well. Yeah, he does, does it in a great little accent. He does, that's what I say. Warm, you agree, you agree, guys. It? It's all more authentic if you've got someone with the actual yeah. accent going on about it. Do you know what I mean? That's right, buddy. Like that. so um, we're getting Duan on next. next yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dwayne McSwerver. I like that. I tell you what we're going to do at this point. So our good friends at Honda uh, want a one-word review. Well, of they were the our good friends section. until... Well, they still are, okay. according to the T's and C's. Till tins, so till the... <laughs> we're going to come on to England, but... Give us one word to sum up the weekend from your perspective. Hask, your one word to sum up the weekend would be... Delightful. Right. Is, well, that, is that the rugby or just, just the weekend? Just delightful. It was just, just a delightful weekend. It was a good weekend. day, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah okay. I, got, got, I told you we got good food. The game was good. Uh, 
I mean, the, the fans, yeah, it's, it's work on with cheering, I think, still a bit soulless. Actually, in the bowl, I think it was very good. But they just, I mean, we'll come on to this yeah. in a moment. Let's come and, on then, to and then on, I took my mum out for a birthday on Sunday. Delightful. That was delightful. <laughs> delightful weekend. Michael, in your pale Are you chinos. About all games or just Well, you just go, game? just one word to sum oh, up the weekend. Honda. Thrilling. Yeah, that is a good word. Jazz. <laughs> Smooth. Jizz. <laughs> no jazz. No. Um, if you haven't seen it, the reason, because this is a clever little segue, uh, we've also got our one-word review, and I think we've been doing a bit of that on socials. But if you haven't seen it, we also had a fantastic day out with the Good Scouts and Rugby Girls in two Honda HRVs, <coughs> what's left of them, uh, where we went head-to-head -head with uh, the girls of GSR. And I won't spoil the outcome, but yeah. it doesn't take a, a rocket but scientist Sheila's to work out was, yeah. how Let, let's it just came say together. Girls take things more seriously oh, than boys. Oh, way more serious. Yes. Way more serious. And the fact they brought their own kicking tea. Yeah. They ch basically, they cheated. cheated. Yeah, well, cheated. I'm not sure they did. I think well, they were I just resourceful. What? They were just resourceful. What, the fact that if you've got both the world's of us, best both goal of us kicker are retired and none of us are kickers. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, you they, know, we don't carry yeah. but kicking teams. I'm, I'm technically, uh, not, I'm not able-bodied. We should get extra points for the fact time. that we can make a plastic cup that will fit a ball. Yeah. Well, you I did. made well, a you plastic did, yeah. Yeah. Here's one I prepared also, earlier. And the worst thing was that Elmer outshone you as well as a presenter. Really showed you your you know areas of development. So I didn't watch that. Well, like your ability to speak just then. That's yeah. really good. That's good development. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a shing shong in short. Yeah, we did have a shing shong, yeah. Um, England. Do don't say start? it like that. Don't say England. It like that. I don't think yeah. it needs What's to be like bad? that. No, somewhere in between. England. Um, England. Yeah, look. England. I, I think there's... there's man, I'm going to be... We need to be... This, this pod needs to continue our balanced and positive view in the fact that... Look, it's it was always tough. I mean, it's been a bit critical. Uh, it's been been not great on Eddie what both of us said in the aftermath. I don't but think I don't he think meant, he meant to it do in that, that way. What's I happened? know, I agree. Well, he came uh, out he said England said are good at nothing. Good at anything. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a what? Would you uh, put well, I think what he's referring to is the data would suggest they had the worst scrum of the tier one nations last year. The defense defensive defensive number nine. game is ninth in tier one nations. Yeah. There was something else as well. It, it, it's the stats are saying England are at the moment making life very difficult right, for themselves. Fine, okay. And he has said we've got lots of work to do yeah, on these so areas. Gonna, yeah. The press what? have said, Borthwick Lambas said he. Yeah. Written press, I should yeah, say. But, oh, yes, we're gonna, we're yes, gonna, yes, we're gonna be more you specific. When we slag people, it's normally the the written press just to be very clear yeah. but you know I, I, can, I can understand why they've gone there I don't think yeah. they've, they've rehashed it too much so my my immediate thoughts would be there was a lot of improvement speed of ball was off the chain yeah um, their possession their territory their general management of the game for the first 60 minutes was well actually probably most of the game yeah but there were snapshots of poor defensive organisation within there uh, as much as that was one of the greatest solo tries we've seen should never have got to that point um if i was faz i would have belted the guy in the back who blocked him i did think about that i would have just pushed him straight yeah, into the other bloke yeah yeah exactly yeah, but and i can't believe get, yeah, but you can no just, no you, you can't, can't you can't yeah, you can. i can't believe faz did that you I, can still push him I, out the I way would, i would run full pelt into him to get to him knowing he was there hit that bloke straight into him so he hit the other bloke and they all fell over but then but then <laughs> that's what i would have done genuinely yeah. would have done i genuinely okay, would have yeah, done that smashed into him and then you know be like oh god sorry ref he's in the fucking way and do do and the swears in you know but pieces. you'd have been yellow carded for that well but he wouldn't have scored a mega try would he and 10 minutes in the, in the sim bin might have been oh, worth it well i mean worth it and also um, I think, Mar you think Joe Marchant was also has got to realise that because uh, uh, once you've passed it one in, it's very rare, and you've passed it to Duan van der Merwe, who I know he's now called the Swerve, but isn't renowned for swerving. Don't give him that route. Yeah, like you, you've basically invited him in there and then and then stepped in late. There was a lot of people running up, going, "Oh, just if I slow down a bit, I probably yeah, won't have to be anywhere settling. near him." <laughs> um, mean, a bit yeah. like... So there were, you know, and then the the Ben Curry one was very unfortunate. It pops out the back, he sort of goes for the ball, and Ben White's picked it up on the hoof, and he yeah. just sort of gassed him a little bit. But there were, you know, some defensive tweaks. You have to remember that uh, Scotland also had that one down the outside where Hoggy's passed back on the inside, yes. sort of butchered that Kyle one. Up to so. Him. You know, it, there were signs of improvement in terms of the way that they attack, but I would still like to see a bit more. I'd like to see uh, Jack Van Poorfeet running more, like because the ball was that fast. He can actually take a few steps, which helps. Yeah. It helps draw people off those forward runners that are coming. Um, there were some lovely little tip plays. They will be. They will just be good. They weren't clinical enough. They didn't take opportunities. They didn't take enough points away from the opposition's twenty-two, uh, where. 
you know, to give Scotland but the why, praise. That, why are they not doing that? Because they haven't done it for two years. I would still say they need to make more line breaks. They only made two line breaks. Yeah. Scotland made six line breaks with very limited ball. Um, so I'd like to see, we need to see more actual line breaks happening. Um, but, I, you know, they haven't had any, uh, they haven't shown, and this is what we said uh, before Eddie went, is that creativity that they had 2018, 2019, they're not creating the opportunities. And that that happened again. They bounce, They bounce left and right a lot when it's not even on to bounce you know they go down blind sides that aren't really really there for them um so that's a little bit worry i think sometimes they carry impact the forward carries impacts of four so four of them are going into that rut which you know when only one person's in defensively you're then absolutely screwed so i think um, that might have been indicative about the um the quickness of the ball because you can see tactically that they were trying to come alive in their 22. Do you remember when I said this is a bit of sage wisdom last time that if you were going to win the game, you'd, you'd, you'd slow it down and try and control your half, try and make sure the set piece exit properly. Then get in, when you got into their half, the lights come on and you really, really want to go for it. And they were absolutely trying to create that momentum. But the problem is they no doubt will have drilled all week. The first two men in really focusing on clear out. But if you're in the mindset of doing that, you just sort of panic sometimes. You go, fuck, no one's going to be there. And you all run at the same time. And I think as you review that and as they get better at that, you then start making better decisions. And, and extra people won't end up going there. Yeah, 80 kicks as well is a lot because uh, it's double what was in the, well, I think in both game, both the other games. So there was a bit of caginess. You could see that as well. I think England are cagey um, because they do you, know do you the recognize, spot that they're in. Do you see a side that's perhaps a little low on confidence yeah I, I well i think well, i think once they were 20 no. points to 12 up i think they stopped playing a little bit there's too many kicks i understand that if the ball slowed down you you look at putting kicks through at the end but i would always put the kick in that they scored off play close to the line and let marcus smith put a kick. it that's sort of undefendable you know you saw it um they tried france tried a similar thing is if you can play it out the back and then you could put a there's never anyone there and you walk in, but then those little kicks from Van Plorfeet uh, over the top from the Rook, which aren't there. There was a couple of, just eradicate a few of those, but I think there, there's a few of those that, you know, still are not Eddie-isms, but, you know, it's been in, the, Eddie has played a lot around with messing, trying to mess around with bat threes. And, you know, we had massive success with it when we won, um, when we sort of spanked France at home. I can't remember what year it is. I know Alex will probably pull it up, where we scored for just, bringing defences up and then putting those cross oh, yeah. along Johnny, the floor. Um, Johnny May and Ashton yeah. Yeah. went so, to town, didn't they? Yeah, I think that's still sticking around there. Whereas as long as you keep, you know, if you look, compare it to Ireland, Ireland won't kick in that area. They would either kick to score, which would be a cross field, or you just keep the ball till they give a penalty yeah. away. And then you can either go for the corner or you can take the post. That's what, you know, you look at that, you know, the Wales game, that's, Wales made the biggest mistake ever, just giving Ireland penalties to give you access into their 22 and there's impossible to stop. So, look, I think Steve will be really disappointed, but I think he'll have seen improvements. I think there are still potentially a couple of changes that could happen around there. You have to remember that he did probably lose five of a possible starting, uh, of the possible starting 15 Who over the last two weeks. Courtney. Yep. Um, I think Day, someone like Daily Slade. Yeah, Daily Slade, even Dan Kelly for, as another yeah. option to I think you you were stuck with making sure you had Marcus and Farrell. Rather yes. you didn't really have another option. Um well, obviously you didn't pick Matt, so how many is that? Four? That's four, yeah. yeah. Pick Chief. So no. you know, he, he, yeah, anyway, well, you could have messed around with any could of the back row. Obviously, ben, uh, Tom Curry's not there, yeah. who you would say. Um, so there are there are options, but there are still options to change. Uh, there are still options to change. I think Ben, uh, ben Earl came on and played really positive. Yeah. Um, I thought Mako came on and played uh, really positive. I didn't really understand the point of having Cole on the bench. I'm not sure he's someone to bring on to finish a game, but he did play all right. But... I, you know, I think you need someone more than I don't know what anyone what do you think on that I thought whether it's just about the scrum you wouldn't or necessarily is it label Dan as impact impact that's well, what I mean but actually the way he's been playing for Leicester I know what I mean you know in terms of some of the carrying and some of the things he's been doing I think he I think he's I think he's reinvented his game a bit more yeah. in regards a bit to lighter, that isn't he? Yeah, I, yeah I just also think I, I, I just think he looks he's in good shape yeah. I think you know look would you would you ordinarily bring on a Macca you know he's got the ability to play Coley has a different sort of 
skill template, set. skill set. But actually, I, I think just to come and bring up, see that game, know someone's going to be consistent, going to deliver their role, I would say. But I know what you mean. You're not you're not a million miles off. So so they'll be disappointed, but you see, edge. Uh, I'm I'm just so happy to see them playing at the speed of, or trying to play with that speed of ball because that is the biggest key. Then what that gives them gives them the abilities to look about well what are we missing where where should we have attacked if we're getting this speed of ball where should we be going and then i think uh, you know uh, super kev's just got to look at a few tweaks defensively because i did uh, you know i felt that they got round us too easily at some point or you know they, they sort of unlocked us a little bit in those in those little snap moments it wasn't all the time because they didn't really they didn't have the ball but um yeah there's a few bits of detail that I, uh, they'll have a look at come on well i was just going to say look from from my, from my perspective i i don't know what people thought was going to happen you know there was going to be no miracles i don't think england you know even under eddie yes that you know they didn't play particularly well in a few of the games but i say they were only three or four percent off getting it right i think that was the same with this game i thought there was lots of things to be it's excited quite about quite a long time being three or four yeah percent but off, i think that's the nature i just don't think you i don't know if you looked at all the games this weekend i don't know there's nothing that, that Steve and his team were going to be able to do that was suddenly going to make you know, a huge gulf of a difference. I think it was always going to be quite close against Scotland. I think Scotland are a good side. Mm. I think actually at times we did well. I thought we moved the ball well, um, especially into play with forwards, trying to change the point of attack. Uh, the confidence thing, I think, is someone that pe something that people throw out there. This team's lacking in confidence. I don't think so. I don't think... Um, the fans might lack confidence in, in the team. I think when you're on the field, I think you're actually back it. I think I don't think you've got a problem. I think you're excited to be there. I think you want to win. I think where the confidence may be dented would be when you're suddenly only three points ahead and you're like, fuck, this could go either way. That might affect I mean, you. So they so, still scored three tries, which we, uh, it, in the whole of last year's Six Nations, we scored seven and five were against Italy. Yeah. Yeah. So they've scored three against Scotland straight off the bat. So, that is an improvement in itself is scoring the three. And if you imagine the the territory they had, they will feel they've left two yeah. at least out there. Yeah. I don't think we're in I don't look, I think we're in a good place. I think the result didn't go away. We're not we in lost. a good place because we didn't so, win. No, but, sorry, but, but also this goes back to the fact that we always say that uh, you should beat Scotland. We've got to forget that. We yeah. we get caught up in history yeah. as well. Hang on. Well actually actually the the Recent latest history. history. Like the oldest cliche is, is you should beat Scotland. Yeah. You never know what French side's going to turn up. Yeah. Italy will be they're disruptive. Com they're, complete, they're completely gone now. Yeah. Because this this new history is that Scotland are actually, should be favourites going into yeah. that game. Hmm. Now, no one ever does that, yet that Scotland have the ability to beat anyone on their day. And we accept that, that they can be outstanding. So why can't they be outstanding? And on the weekend, they were outstanding at what they did. So yeah. why... Why does it always have to be that it's England's fault where it actually it can just be that Scotland were far more clinical, England will rue chances and or positions on the field where they could have got yeah. more out of it uh, and they'll look to get better at that and that's what they've got to do as a team. And the thing with it is is that, you you know, exactly what Mike, Mike said, Scotland outplayers, you know, um, at times, we there were some signs of improvement. It's you know, Borders has got, was it nine games to the World Cup or something? Well, yeah, but yeah, eight, eight, now, eight games is yeah. all he's got. Um, you know, I, I said the only disappointing thing I think would have been those defensive laps. But but again, that is with a, with a new a new system. I think on another day, two or three percent the other way, we're we're beating Scotland. I think everyone just needs to stay calm. Um, I think it's been an interesting test. There are some obviously some things that aren't working. I'm not sure there's 10, 12 things still working. I think there will be some change in selection. I think some players um, did play well. Uh, like Chesham, I thought he was, you know, he was a real surprise package in in that. You remember, galloping giraffe. Yeah, isn't he? I just Great and also in talking to him, we had a little spy, spy in the camp who said that he's been absolutely carving up training. I won't won't mention his name. So, yeah. you know, he's been doing well. I think there was, I think there are lots of lots of positives. I just think the manner in which those tries were scored. Yeah will be disappointing because they didn't have to work particularly hard for them. It's one thing getting done after 36 phases, you know, getting a kick chase wrong, giving it to their biggest unit player and everyone sort of switching, switching off. off. And, and also how many people were in the line, where there big gaps, where there big dog legs, that comes down to Ben White was brilliantly finished, but yeah. quite opportunistic yeah. as well. That ball bounces the other way. Yeah. And, suddenly and, so, and so I don't think, I, again, I just think it's one of those things where lots, lots of things to, to improve actually in a good place but they, they did show signs of seeing what they wanted to do and I thought they looked I thought they looked good at times can we explore two themes because we can talk about all sorts of individuals and tweaking etc I want to explore two themes with you one of which is right here right now one of which I think might offer hope for England fans heading towards the World Cup that you mentioned 10 12 mm. uh, I, I actually want to look at 12 and 13 so doing a bit of digging 
well done Shira in our in our sort of producer's chair Wales had a combined center partnership weight of 209 kgs this weekend Scotland 205 Ireland 207 France 198 Italy 197 fairly consistent England's is 100, 183 it's not seismic but I think what what was interesting and you asked the question of Greg is that Tua Pilotto is a brilliant option for a 10 when you need it and you look at Wales had Joe Hawkins 6'2 and 100 kg and George North who's 6'3 and 109 you know France had got Fiku Scotland had got Tua Pilotto Ireland had McCloskey and yet and Ring Rose Ring Rose, and Ring Rose well, yeah. Yeah, he's, not, he's not small either is there anything in that? Are England missing a trick, bucking a trend, trying um, to do something that others aren't, and therefore no, no not necessarily. But I would, I would, what I would challenge on on that, it's not a weight thing, it's how it's put together. Like Henry, for example, Henry Trinder or Simbad, as examples, the power that they can generate is obscene. So even though they'd be eighty-five kilos or whatever, you get Simbad stepping off and stepping into you, he can bump you. Now, my but question is that that's in a wider channel, though, surely, isn't it? Well, no, it's, it's, but then he's got this, he's got the feet and everything to get out out of the you know to move that around. I thought Bre Brex on yeah. uh, for Italy, I think, is it Brex? Yeah, Brex, Brex, Brooks, Bre uh, six to and hundred kgs. But he was he was fantastic. But then I also, but I will come on to that. But I think you can have people who just carry it's all about the lines. Now, this is where I don't feel that Mark, it has to be Marcus, or well, whether you go. Farrell and Marchant is does Faz give Joe Marchant the best options that he wants? Does he give you know um, Smith the best options? Whereas someone like Tupaluto or someone who's playing centres week in week out and using it in that way in that role as getting over the game like that is not what Faz is. Oh, well, that's not what Owen Farrell is. To put he's not doing that every week. He's playing fly half. He's not pulling it. So then to switch on to a twelve mindset of you being that focal point to get over over gain line, that's not what they're playing. So they're playing two playmakers. So then they're always thinking about where I can be a playmaker, not necessarily about the shits hit the fan. I need to get over the top of someone. That's I just don't think that you can flip into that mentality. And you can tell they didn't do that because Marcus Smith made how many carries did he make? Smith made fourteen carries for eleven. For eleven meters, according to the stats I got here, and next next one get Genji made twenty. Why is you, why is your ten doing fourteen carries? I know he runs with the ball, but also only making eleven meters. That's what that I mean. Would suggest that those. That's pop, what I mean. Yeah, and that's that. why I think. Look, I I I would, I would be interested. To, you, you guys know better which uh, two tens have ever worked together. I know Dan Carter and. Uh, Barrett, Aaron, Aaron Major, or something. no, no, yeah, Aaron, Aaron Major, yeah, who was it? Yeah, I know, but well, obviously New Zealand are trying both, yeah, Barrett and Richie Mwanga, yeah, yeah they're trying that, but but you know when obviously Dan Carter was a twelve to I can't remember which ten, Carlos, the, yeah, Carlos the three World Cup, and, that, and, and Dan Carter sort of did quite well at twelve, you know, made most of his his, his debuts there, well, played learned, really well. But that is Dan Carter, yeah, yeah, he, yeah so I know, but my point yeah. is, yeah, no, no, but but yeah. I don't know how many of these these experiments work. I remember in two thousand and eleven. The old, you know, Tinsley Stag do talk. We, um, they tried. They never played uh, was Floody Flood and Floody and Wiggles Wiggles and ever together until that last game. Never practiced it. Never did anything apart from that week. Put him in. Put him in I've yet France, to see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've, right. I've yet to see. There go. I've yet to see. It's my regret. I've yet to see. Um, that work really well is is there i mean i don't know enough i'm not big enough north but, but do, i'm asking i'm asking you the question i mean it, i don't know i just don't well, think it does because i think i think this point it, is really clear are England that, going in a different direction to what everyone else is doing yeah right i now. just think tins's point is that the most salient is that the, the whole idea of having playing you know a ten two tens is that you've got options either side of the breakdown you've got two different playmakers who have two different abilities to to, to play and perform two different kicking options etc 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 all seems great on paper but if no one is actually doing the job of the of the twelve, I'm not saying Owen isn't, but I'm saying in, in this analogy he's not. You're missing that point. You're missing that as a weapon because if you don't get over the game line, the, then the two playmakers become obsolete anyway. So, so then it's it's about how. So I th I generally believe if if everyone had been fit, I sounded like Clive Woodward then. I generally believe. <laughs> Fuck. Oh Jesus. Um, I think that if uh, both everyone had been fit, I wouldn't have seen Marcus Smith and. Owen playing together. I think they would have played Owen at 10. You can bring Marcus on for the last 30, 25, 30 minutes. 
even if you need to push Faz out to 12 then, I think you would have seen a Dan Kelly or a Slade and then and then it, if you just stuck with Marchant. Now, if you play those two playmakers, you need a focal point. So then do you need to play an Ollie Lawrence or a, or a Tua Lange? Or you need to get creative about what you do with your bat line. You do different st- uh, s- setups. You could bring Ollie Hassel Collins in because he can carry the ball. So you can bring him, you can use him like ben, we used to use Ben Cohen. Bring him as a one at, you know, you, get, you can use focal other point, players to other do the players job. to do that job because Faz wants to be that runner out the back of the of the of the player, but then that's not not natural. It's not naturally Marchand's only role. He wants also to be in space where he can bounce around and do everything else. So it, it's just then pe- being able to find the best way of using your backline balance. You I mean you've got Freddie Stewart, the who's a, who's a big unit. Well, yeah. you can get him up there. You know, the old <laughs> Will Green would love it. The old world class. Uh, the centre peels across, he comes down the middle. <laughs> they tried, I remember Will Green would try to bring that in. Yeah. And he was like, lads, I've got this wicked move. It's going to really work in training. And everyone's like, what? And he went, yeah, this is amazing. And it all the lads like, this isn't going to work in a modern defence. He's like, trust me. Did it. <laughs> and the guy got absolutely, absolutely fucking smoked. <sighs> and everyone's like, yeah, thanks for your moves, Will, but this isn't uh, 1999, yeah. Chief. So, so, right. so- so, yeah, so you've you've got to use different ways, and I, I just don't think I don't think they they best use them. But so, think, so what is the answer well, then? Just, when, I've got sorry. To, sorry, yeah, to interrupt yes, you. I just, I'm also I've seen a lot. Like um, again, we talked about it in the uh, the live room before the game. Uh, Owen Farrell, the, the sort of the, the tide turns and goes with him and against him all the time, right? Again, before this game, I think there was you know some genuine respect. How he's been playing for Saracens. He's obviously captain. He's got the mark. You know, we love him. I love him as a bloke. He's a great player, great competitor. Doesn't play the game in the media, but doesn't need to because every teammate wants him in their team. So yeah. that's all you have to ask. But again, I seen post game and he won't care. But people are saying, "Oh, England can't progress." You know, he's it's lots being yeah, labelled. He's door again. I don't really disagree with because he has he does play when he's in the system that he's really comfortable with. Saris, where he's played twelve loads of times and he's played exceptionally well there. It's just not at the moment gelling. Now, Marcus made a very valid point in the fact that is it a time thing? In fact, of just having consistency of playing together, because that is one of the things you also have to remember about this England team is it, through Eddie. And one of the faults that I've brought up about Eddie all the time is there is no real consistency in the players that he uses. He, he stays with the same group, but he changes that a lot and you'd never get that. But ba- I think England is still going to got to have that club feel about it where you are comfortable in what you're doing and your skill uh, and what, and how you're trying to play and I don't think we've got that yet and and that's going to take time now the interesting question is now with someone for authors is does he go back if that that team is the same option for him does he go back to someone like a Ollie Lawrence or a Tua Lange to give him a focal point on the outside or are they going to stick with what they've they've got and what they're happy with obviously if someone like Dan Kelly I think Slade's going to be fit this week um, for what I read right um, Dan Kelly maybe but a bit further away obviously Courtney's probably going to be fit do those little changes come in straight away and and do you move on from that when you think about a world cup and I'm sorry to sort of throw it forward but you you know South Africa are such a good world cup team because they're big it's relatively risk free and they know what they're doing I would not want to play like South Africa but well that, so, that's an uh, interesting yeah, point. So, yeah. but, but do you want to play? Better to be boring with a trophy than yeah. yeah well, that's, that's, that's my that's point. Really, argu- that is your argument. But then you, when you, when you go through losing periods that they did, it's pretty so it's pretty so, soul so destroying. Do you believe at this point that a let's hypothetically say a Smith, Farrell, Marchant, or Slade or whatever it is, ten, twelve, thirteen, is more likely to see England progress than a Farrell, Tuilangi, Lawrence, ten, twelve, thirteen? In a World Cup semi-final, yes, it can, but it depends on how you use people. Well, that's what I mean, though. Are you using them in the right, in the ways that no, you would expect so the, to use them? No, that's what I just said. They're not. I would use Ollie Hassel, Colin coming off the wing. I use Freddie Shirt. I would. So change. you would, so you would still be- go into a semi-final with the intention of playing in the manner that a Smith Farrell Marchant, but then use your assets. But then better. use your, use your ball better. carrying okay. assets better. Okay. I think I think that's a very interesting question, really. I suppose it's: Do you go into a semi-final I would to have play been, would or have to been, smash? But it would have been interesting with someone like Hugh Jones and Tupelo, uh, Tupelo uh, if you'd have got in with Lawrence and Manu. Yes, uh, and what, uh, that makes people yeah, go. So I, yeah, that's, but that's my point. Yeah, that's well, my I just point. think, well, uh, look again, we're, we're not in the mechanics of it, and Tins, you know, probably knows yeah. better than, than both of us. But but I'd say uh, as a player, you know, I always would want a, a massive ball carrying unit within my centres 
purely because uh, at back the back row, it makes it easier. Yeah, for makes it sweet. easier for the back row. The the, mo the international rugby, for whatever it is at the moment, you've more often not got 14 men on your feet. Yeah. It's about getting A to B uh, through brute force, right? And ultimately, you have those moments where you you know you try to take as many players off their feet, so you create the space elsewhere. If you hold on to it long enough, you'll either get a penalty or um, hopefully the player will open up. I just think from a point of view of this side and its DNA, you need to get someone over the gain line, whether that's off short line outs, whether that's playing off 10, whether that's coming off scrums, you need to set a target. And I don't see at the moment us doing that enough. And I don't think, and I think if you were to get back into this team and make it what its DNA is, which is physical and direct, you need that. And I would agree with you. And actually, when you look around the international game at the moment, Dialende in South Africa, McCloskey yeah. in well, Ireland, Karevi in Australia. I would argue, go, th go through any centre partnerships in the history of the game where you can find two light ones. I just don't think I think I think the mentality with it is that it, it, it's it's a nice idea to have what and is? It, uh, to, that you've got two playmakers. I think yes. it's a nice concept. Yes. I think unfortunately the only way and again this is the oldest cliche you only right, uh, um, earn the right to go wide and to play once you've gone through people yeah. and, and gone been gone direct. And I don't think at the moment it has that directness. When you see Manu you know, playing Manu and using as a target, whether they know he's coming or not, he still takes yeah. a load of uh, stopping. The thing is with Manu, was probably wasn't playing well enough. But yes. Ollie Lawrence could have gone. Yeah, Ollie, Ollie Lawrence has been tearing up trees. I also, I all do think though, just like the the issue when it was when Billy and Manu were playing. They were only the real ball carriers in the forwards, so you sort of got lined up. You need other people to take responsibility. Freddie Stewart's got to go looking for the yeah. ball. There's got to be played in. You, you want them. You basically you want to make the defence make decisions, and you want them to be shaking their pants and seeing people coming at all angles. And you but want that surely then is a Farrell to a Lange Lawrence. That you, yeah, are you, no, I, I I think you can have a, another ball player in there, but yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> for Farrell to a Lange Slade. Yeah, uh, but I would always play. I, look, I always think that Manu should play thirteen. But okay, uh, uh, so or, would, se or set up on. So there, so you can still have your ball players. But pick, pick me your 10, 12, 13 for this what, Saturday. Every, everyone, everyone, everyone's fit. Everyone's, everyone's in fit. form. Um, Carling, I, I would, I would put <laughs> Farrell, <laughs> Carling, Gusted, Tyndall, Gusted, um, Gusted, uh, Farrell, Gusted. I'll go extreme. Farrell, Kelly, and uh, Lawrence. So you're not playing Manu? No, because no. I don't think he is playing well enough. Okay, cool. But I think Dan I like Kelly that, Dan Kelly is the he's the that in between guy. He can carry he, he direct, he bosses a defense, defensive captain at Leicester. I think this is I think it's very interesting that with eight games to go until the World Cup. I think, but that's I think we, every we England have, fan you would ask but would also, pick you a different 10 top 13. I think you're and right. in your in your era it, it wasn't it was Wilk, really a it was discussion. always Wilkinson, Tyndall, Greenwood. Yeah. But, then, but it was that for five years yeah, in the run. So and also, if that did, if it wasn't that, it was Catty. It was it was the same sort of yes. three. That did, but whereas now there's so many people playing well that because you haven't settled on anything, that because you haven't got you haven't really figured out your style of how you're going to play. Yeah. yeah. Then what is best? Suited? But ironically, Catty, who 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 obviously when they had that golden period when Brian Ashton was playing, was playing those massive wide passes, just hit balls, ball, yeah, yeah, it was individual. But ironically, when he came on in the World Cup um, semi-final, he just was direct. Yeah. He didn't try to overplay it. So, but, I, he, but then that was, but then that's still rugby smart. Yeah. So Catty understood that he had to do my job. So he just because all we had to do was keep the ball. It yeah. wasn't about taking risk at that point. So I get, I would question, you know, are, are people, are we at that point where they're that savvy at the moment because they haven't spent that time together? I think there's a lot of, ma there's a massive thing for, about going into a World Cup and not having combinations that are set. I, would, I argued about, but, you know, with Eddie and what he hasn't done. But that is, you know, that is key because going into 2019, I think everyone pretty much, you pretty, could, pretty much could pick. Well, it was 15. it was Farrell Ford yeah. to Alangi yeah. Joseph. I, I also of, think as well as an option. The, the concept with Eddie was often uh, you, you seeing the players as weapons in an arsenal, choosing particular weapons to, to face a certain opposition. I think when you're getting to this point, I think sometimes it works you, by tweaking. You know, perhaps you need two uh, guys over the ball, so you you know, say hypothetically, you put an Earl or a, 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 a Willis or a whatever or a 
uh, uh, under nores and a, and a curry because you knew what you're going to get. And when you're playing a, a slightly bigger pack, you might go Courtney at six, Don Brandt and someone bigger. Do you, know what I mean? you play around with it like that. I just think at the moment with the identity of the side and the way they want to play it and the ease, the easy wins. I think some directness around that area is important. I think Owen, I think Owen can do it, but I would, I wonder if they're not in both two minds, trying to play, trying to be clever, yes. trying to be smart. Yeah. Whereas actually, if you said to Owen, look, let Marcus step up. Don't worry about being a second receiver. Owen can, Owen yeah. can carry. Just yeah, be he, super he can direct. do that, and he offloads well. Yeah, but yeah. I think, I think they, they're always worried about getting the ball out out wide or playing out the back, but that's not where you need to be off no. set piece. I also think as well, is this is a bit of a a, a sideshow to the, to the bigger thing. I think it's an easy thing to focus on. I know I'm not so saying, what's the bigger thing? I just think the bigger thing is, is that defensively they probably weren't on, on the money. I think they are, you know, people aren't just getting over the game line as being as direct as they, as they could be. I think, I don't, I think this is a headline thing because so many people have an opinion on it. Yeah. I don't think it's the reason why England aren't winning. But, but I, I don't think, the... I don't, for example, I don't feel their starter plays, which is the main way you get the benefit of someone getting you over the gain line, really, because there should be everyone else should, has the free range to step up when you want a ball carry. You know, so I think it's only really set piece where you, you know, you look what Brex did against France. He was that was all off lineouts. They did some really cool stuff, Italy, really creative stuff around short man ones peeling out round the back, using him off the back of that lineout, and bang, they were over the gain line, uh, and then that's where everything gets into your flow. I don't really feel. I mean, England's lineup was was terrible, to be fair, for 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 whatever reason. Yeah. I don't know why. Whether it was just pressure from Scotland or whatever, um, but they didn't get those starter plays, so they still managed, but still managed to control the game. So I don't I don't see that as a specific reason on Saturday that you'd point you would point. Uh, I just think up. it's what everyone says. It's like, do you remember like when you talk about rugby cliches, you know, like when you talk about France, or you never know what they're going to get, all the crazy Latin spirit. Same thing with England. When it's the, you know, 10, 12, well, it's Far you know, Farrell and Smith. I was like, but, no. But it's, it's, it's always it's... the way. People blame that, that, that yeah. sort of 10, they're 12, not... 13 channel all the time. They're, they're mean, me, Nooney, me, Nooney, Tatey, uh, Floody, got it for, what, four, three, yeah. four years. But is that because it's such an integral part and of being successful? And they were crap, successful? so that didn't help. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you said a very interesting thing just about time together. And one of the things that I sort of, I think, feeds into the conversation we're having here, and I'd, I'd be very interested to get your views on it. I've gone properly sort of deep dive nose on this. But this is the fourth consecutive opening round loss for England in the yeah. Six Nations. And I think that's, from an England fan's perspective, it's sort of like, uh, so it's, you know, another... It's over before it's begun, really. You're the first out of the party, so to speak. So I looked into the makeup of the teams. Okay, so England had seven different... No, bear with me. Concentrate and wait the fuck up. Yeah, no, it was really England had seven different clubs in I their just, starting I just 15. wish I was in a uh, Japanese brothel. Whiskey bar. <laughs> 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 I mean, China, but... It's not where I was going to go. I was just going to say a Japanese ceramics. Yeah. I showed this to you earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Really no, that's really interesting. Yeah, and now you're showing off in front of the cameras. It is fascinating. It is fascinating. England had seven different clubs in their starting 15. Four Saris, three Tigers, three Quins, two Bristol, one Irish, one Northampton, one Sale. Wales had five different clubs, but there were eight Ospreys and four from Cardiff, so 12 from two. Yeah. Scotland had five clubs represented, but six Glasgow, six Edinburgh, so 12 and two. Italy had six clubs represented, but nine from Benetton, including yeah. seven in the pack. Uh, Ireland had... Uh, where are Ireland gone? Four, Ireland had four, four provinces, provinces, 10 and from a Leinster, tree, though. Gina, pear tree. Yeah. So I can't believe you have to look at that. Yeah. And Ireland had four points, 10 from Leinster, and France then buggered up because they had eight clubs, but they did have seven from Toulouse, four in the yeah. pack and their halfbacks. So my question is, when you look at the makeup of England, you've got a Leicester nine, a Quinns 10, a Saris 12. You've got an Irish, a Leicester, and a Saris back three. You've got a Sale, a Quinns, and Northampton back row. You've got, you're trying to blend a lot of people from a lot of very different club cultures into Club England in 11 days, under a this new is remit. This is actually yes, a very good point. I apologise for telling you to be asleep. That, right, that thank is, you very but, much indeed. But this goes, yeah, but it, France sort of ruins it. Every well, other, it doesn't because they've still yeah, got but, seven from Toulouse yes, in there. They've got the spine every, of the team and their halfbacks who grew up playing together, Dupont and... But because we let um, people from every single back. nation around the world come in and dominate a lot of our playing groups, you're never going to get that. Now we don't, Well, we, also, but we're picking, bar France, we're picking from yeah, a lot more clubs. Yeah, yes, so, of course we are, because we don't do a central contractor system. Agreed. 
Yeah. Well, actually, I, I, I don't we're think, all on the same side. I yet. don't think it's that big. A... But then you, but then if you want to solve that problem, you're getting rid of the Premiership and you're joining the URC and you're having four clubs. Oh, and how does that help English rugby? I'm, there would not, be I'm an not saying that for a moment. But, so I, I, it, my point... because then you okay, then you pick all. He's saying you should just pick all the Saris pack. I, what I'm actually saying is, I think England sure. will get better and better through the tournament. And I think if you look at the two teams that, well, Wales obviously have got all. Sort of, is it that bad? <laughs> no, I was waiting. You're like to... the prat at the back of the class. <laughs> no, I was listening. I was listening. Carry on, carry on. Well, if you look at the two, I mean, Wales obviously were an anomaly and they've got all sorts of problems regardless. <laughs> but England probably felt that they didn't put out exactly what they're looking for and France were the other. And I think you're overestimating. Big... I don't think it okay. matters. Uh, I think, you don't? I, I don't uh, think it matters. Uh, I think uh, it's actually worse if you've got more people from one club because then they try to make it play like... You, but look at Leinster. Right. I mean, yeah, but that's like... Leinster. I mean, you know, that's... that's but that's society. what I'm saying. Yeah, but Len it's different. When something's always been dominated by a, a particular side and it's Leinster and they play together and Ireland play but, similar but, to Leinster, also, it's not a problem. Re realistically, there's only really ever been two provinces that really yeah, accounted yeah, to exactly. Ireland. So it's, Munster, so it's always been Munster and Leicester. Yeah. Then obviously Pat Lamb did such a fantastic job that brought Connor on the thing. And then Ulster had the likes of Rory Best and... and Ferris. Yeah, 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 and a yeah. few yeah. others. Roger David Ferris Humphreys Lambert. going back in the day. And um, that would just throw in a... A spattering, but yeah. it's always been based around two, and sometimes it's swung. It's been more well, Leinster, I don't think, I don't, but now but, Leinster but, are just a super team that has. A but, but my of point is that the team. game is such it's such fine margins at the moment at top level rugby, yeah. and it is two and three percent here and there. When you have combinations that know each other in and out as they do here, I think that potentially yeah, so makes we a difference. Build, we have to build that a little bit, and if you you know, I know sacrilege to speak about Clive. You know, Clive did that. So he was good at that. He he now it was to detriment of someone like Shawzy or there were other people who were sort of knock banging on the door and pulling out trees on, on a weekend. But you know, I know that I went through where there were probably other people playing quicker uh, better than me, but only a very short period. Yeah. <laughs> but he would stick you know, he dropped me in two thousand four pretty much because I wasn't playing well enough. Um and then but then you knew each other. And I've always described my relationship with Will Greenwood is the fact that I knew what he was going to do probably before Will did. Was it talk tell, shit? Because and, and I could tell by it. his body position and everything else, I knew what my wingers were going to do. But I think what you're saying there, I'm not sure this current lot would be able to say that. Yeah, but still, if you go back there, I mean, we would have said probably in that team that there was a far more lens. No, I don't think they do. But then a lot of them are young, a lot of them are exper you know, experienced in their first caps and everything, and they're coming into a group that's not settled. So then it's yeah, quite hard just, to find your group. I, I think it's what like, I think. I also yes. think we're looking think, over. You know, we, you're what you're what you're two tackles away from two yeah. tries not happening for Scotland, and we could have won. That's what but. I mean. I don't. I don't. That's what I tried to say. I think I don't think there is that massive fundamental flaws. I think we're just a, a bit off. I would say we, that in the if, regards, those, if those combinations yeah. played more together, they will get better. But, but yeah, and also sure. I think it's, when you're look, I don't understand because as, as a back row, maybe maybe it was a little bit different. But playing with my club teammates, you, you, you sort of have to play, like nine and 10, I can understand what, playing together, you know, to, to, to have that confidence. But actually when you get into an England setup, you, it's pretty clear what the, the, the game plan is, what you have to do, you know, how much time you spent playing together. I don't think it really matters. It's I think it's, a I think it's, only, it's fine. It's but you mentioned nuance. those two yeah. tackles, you know, Farrell and Marchant go up, Farrell gets butt blocked, Marchant's the, the, you know, you Vander, that, what we're talking about here when we're talking about fine margins yeah. is exactly that. Yeah, but ben it's not, White I don't think it would have made a difference. I don't think it would have made a difference if they played together as a club. I don't, you think, don't. That, I don't think it impacts. What I'm trying to say is okay, I think the clarity, true. I think, look, the clarity of the game plan and what you have to do and how you want to play, I think it's pretty clear. I think everyone plays together, you train together enough to understand what's going on. If the nuance of you know reading, so for example, you know every time Will, Will Green had ability to step and offload, or you know Tins is, is going to do what he's going to do, you pick that up. So that kind of thing works really well. But in open play, and the fact they're all over the place, I don't think it actually makes much of a difference. I think the problem where the consistency needs to happen is just that team needs to play together consistently. Doesn't matter they don't do it at clubs. They've got to, you've got to have some consistency at an England level. You've got to have, you can't keep changing players all the time because otherwise you won't build the rapport. You won't have the confidence. Okay, I think we've agreed. Lots of questions. Good luck to Stephen finding the answers. Let's bring in our favourite pizza makers. I hope you've seen the video. Someone described our acting as the best form of shit acting rather yeah. like the in-betweeners. Chloe commented and said you were brilliant. Did she? Yeah, she said you were right. And also the acting on the photo shoot, she was, she was blown away. Well, the photo shoot we haven't revealed to yeah. the friends. Uh, yeah, we're not going to reveal it. We're just going to say a photo shoot happened. It was and good, Alex wasn't it? Was very good. Uh, let's bring in our favourite pizza makers, Domino. Hoo -hoo. 
news. It's time for the Domino's Doughball of the Week, where we pick out our standout performer from the weekend's rugby. Who would you like to go with and why? Um, I've still got a little a little bit of love for Kapuza. Yeah. The little shimmy and the dive to the corner. I think he's just great to watch. He looks like he's about 15 as well, yeah, which is even more Nothing impressive. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I think there is only one. I think you've got to give it to uh, to Duane Van Dyke. Yeah. Dwayne McSworth. Yeah. Dwayne, and Dwayne, like he eats a lot we of call him from now on? He shall be Doth. Dwayne McSworth. Dwayne, Dwayne McSworth from the outer, 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 outer Hebrides. <laughs> <laughs> the extremity yes. Hebrides. The southern uh, Hebrides. Yeah. Very southern. He also looks like he could do with a proper slice of pizza as well. Yes, he could do. He could. Are smash you going through. Dwayne McSworth? Of course I am. Right. Of course, that was a delightful try for a delightful weekend of rugby. Perfect. Anyone else mentions in dispatches? Well, uh, Capuzzo is a good one. Yeah, uh, was great. And then I'd like to uh, do a little special mention. I thought Rio Dyer on his on his debut. He was um, far from Dyer. He yeah. was excellent. He was, uh, and that was a fantastic bit of play from. Was it Kian who covered back and yeah. just cut him off? Because I thought he was scoring that. Do you know what we should do? We what should, should we do? We should because we are because we're advertising the Domino's price slice deal. Did you say a price slice deal? I said deal, a price slice deal yeah, yeah. where you can get Is that, that bad acting again. Yeah, uh, no. so you can get eight pounds for a small, ten pounds for a medium, and twelve pounds for a large. We should have well, that's twelve pounds and like an eight. Deal. Yeah. So let's give Rio Dyer the eight because he's not terribly big. Yes. Let's give Dwayne McSworth the twelve. Yeah. So we can have a ten pound for a medium. Who went best for England? Uh, Ellis Lee. Oh, like do you give pizza. it a, an oh, I don't know. Or, no, oh, let's give it to an Irishman. An Irishman. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kaelin Doris. Yeah. yeah. He's a heck of a player. He's, yeah. Van der Fleer was pretty good too. Van Fleer yeah, was Van der Fleer was good. Yeah. Well, you choose. Um, J. De V. Okay. He's, yeah, fine. He only needs a little J. pizza. J. V. De V. Oh, no, he's a medium. J. De V. Can I just John say Billers. one thing about this Domino's thing? Right? I love working with them. We haven't had a free pizza or a pizza. Well, it's funny you should say that, James. Ages, and we've been giving them out. The reason we're not being given pizzas, James, is because our viewers and listeners did not like the sound of us enjoying our masticating no, our pizza. No, no, eating it on here. I just mean I should be going home with the pizza. My okay. wife has said to me, "Why do you keep doing campaigns of Domino's and not coming home with pizza?" Surely that's one benefit of working with an exceptional pizza brand. It is. I've had no pizzas. Right. Well, perhaps we should give ourselves. Yes, I'll, I'll give myself. We should, we should the create 12. the. You get the little doubles. <laughs> this You've is, got this little is doubles. more of a section I think Domino's were looking for. Well done, Dwayne McSworth, for your £12 large pizza. We might throw in 50 quid's worth for you and the lads. Well done. Um, shall we have a. a we, we, we'll keep it short and sweet because we're going to get into Wales and Ireland in, in due course and Italy and France. Penny for the thoughts of Warren Gatland. <laughs> yeah. Look, Did you see uh, the no, meme? If, yes. Yeah, if I good. jump in quickly on that, is when I watched it back. It wasn't as bad for Wales as the score I made it look. It was just complete domination for 20 minutes. First half, Wales made every mistake you shouldn't make against uh, Ireland. So many, so many penalties. I think there was 18 in the game. And all of them just giving Ireland free ball down in their 22, which you cannot do. They are, I would, I would like to guess that they are one of the most deadly teams if you give them line-out, set-piece ball, in your 22. Um, and then in the second half, Wales sort of turned it around a bit. I thought Liam Williams played fantastic well. And then that the yellow card sort of took the sting out of it a little Thoughts bit. Thoughts on the wink? I didn't see the wink. Oh, so when Johnny Sexton got up, he winked. And the whole of Principality went, boo. Yeah. Boo. And that was a Welsh boo as well, that wasn't was it? That was boo. Yeah. Boo bad. So, well, I, I, think, I think it was all probably always, all, always a yellow. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I, I, I don't think... You know, whether it was a wink at him saying he's okay, I, I don't know. I won't need, don't want to really go into that because I don't. I don't think we need to. But um, so I don't think it was as bad as everyone sort of made it to be. But still, Fair play Ireland. Yeah, you know, Ireland are unbelievably clinical. Yeah, and you have to respect that. Is Gatlin missing Edwards? Is it Batman without Robin? Thumb without I, Louise? I, I do think one of the key to any coaching side is not just the head person it yeah. is the team you put around him and you know um, I obviously think um, he's got Alex King who I'm a massive fan of I think he's a brilliant brilliant guy um, I think they need time like anybody does I would say though the reason Eddie for example wasn't as successful as he should have been in those latter years is because he didn't have strong enough people around him you know l l losing John Mitchell was the final straw 
I think, you know, Gats having a Sean Edwards is an incredible asset, as you've seen. And more often than not, the makeup of the coaching side is important. That's why I think, you know, Borthas alone was good. Simfield and Evans adds to that. And I think there'll be some more additions. So I think he needs to find someone to, to, to kick on and who that will be. And I think this will be an experiment, the Six Nations, to see do things work, do things gel. And you might have to change the side of you know, the coaching staff again. Or maybe you'll stick with it. And look, you're playing Ireland, who are on fire. True. It's always going to be a bad, you know, and no amount of Warren Gatlin magic and motivation can change a deficit round like that. There's only so much talk you can you can have when Ireland are as, as good as they are at the moment. It does unfold for Ireland now, doesn't it? Tins from here because they've got the away win in Wales, which you know, first game, yeah. ten, ten years, now, ten, ten years, and now it's France at home, England at home, Scotland away, Italy away. Yeah, look, I think not uh, in that order. Yeah, I, obviously it's the game of the tournament this weekend uh, with with Ireland hosting France. Now it's France will want to be better than what they were, but that's not. Ta I don't want to take anything away from how good Italy were. Um, but I, I still think France have got a fantastic squad and they can step it up a level. Um, and it's, I think it bodes. It's a ma it's a massive statement for the future of this year as well for them to go and you know go and beat them in their own back go beat Ireland in their own backyard gives them a massive confidence going forward. So it's going to be a cracking game, uh, and let's just hope it's the cracking game we want it to be. Do France f go from second to fifth in a week? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't think they do. I still. I still think they've got a lot in there. I don't think they played well on the weekend. My the biggest worry for me on because they came from eight clubs. I'm joking. Carry on. We just, can we get some tumbleweed? <laughs> uh, my biggest worry about France on the weekend was the physicality. For the last two <coughs> years, they have been so dominant physically, yeah. and on the weekend they weren't. I thought Italy made easy yards. They didn't really get. They didn't really charge that. Def that defense. That Sean Edwards defensive line of just being brutal up on the, on that flat line wasn't really there. Sean Edwards um, is going to go. We're going mental. I think mental. He looked like he was about to go mental you know on the sideline. Bagage fucks out like a. He um, looks good though. The tan is, he is really good, you know, he, I did notice the tan. Did you see that his quote? He's no defensive side that he's ever coached has been as penalised as France were in that game. Mm. And he said, and again, it was interesting because I thought, oh, please don't be like do a Raz Erasmus because he said, I've got to talk, sit down and talk to referees because on no side I've ever coached ever been as penalised in defence as that. I wonder, A, that I don't think it looks as physical as you, you're right, but I wonder that at some point they were slightly hamstrung because they were getting penalised all over the place. Mm. It sort of takes the wind out of the sails, you know what I mean? Um, but that is a concern because, yeah. you know, if France... The reason France have been so good is because they've always nailed the attack, but they've had a uniform yeah. defensive side that understood what they were doing, that was dominant, that and was competing for them on the floor. I think the most penalties they've given away over the last the 14 games they've won is nine. Yeah, and they've blown up. I don't know what the stat was. You might have the stats on your old. We'll get it for you, right? Yeah, but I think um, it was pretty high. Um, let's leave that there in terms of a debrief. Yeah. Uh, what we're going to move on to is our new game for this year's Six Nations. We've got a new game, Alex. We've got a new game, What's James. game, Alex? One you guys have joined in on in a big way as well. Mystic Mike's predictions in partnership with our good friends at City Index, one of the leading providers of commission-free spread betting across thousands of financial markets. Tins, over to you. This weekend, we've got Ireland, France, Scotland, Wales, England, Italy. Team penalty is seven. Yeah. Who is getting your backing and why? So, um, I, we got two out of three in terms of getting the calls right. I was looking really good on England for a bit. But that way it all went wrong. Um, so my predictions are... Who we start with, France? Uh, going Ireland-France first. Shall I give you some stats? France have beaten Ireland in 59 out of 101 previous matches. 22 wins apiece in Dublin. Ireland won more turnovers than any side in round one. Nine. France have won the last three encounters against Ireland in the Six Nations. So uh, I think Ireland will go in favourites uh, from the bookies, but I picked... Uh, France to win the tournament so I've got to stick with them and I'm going to say that France are going to edge a thriller wow um, and I, because, that's a value bet and I'm going to say by th four France by four this is your pub ammo ladies and gents on Scotland Wales Gatland has never lost to Scotland as Wales head coach it's a shout isn't it Ireland inflicted Wales heaviest home defeat in the Six Nations since 2001 last weekend Dwayne Van Swerve broke more tackles than any other player in round one, in brackets 11, and Scotland have never won their first two matches in the Six Nations. That is remarkable. So, 
Is this the weekend that history is made? I'm going to say yes. Good. This is going to be the weekend that history's made, and I think I don't think it's going to be pretty, but I think Scotland are going to come through it, and they are going to actually. I, th I think they're going to win by seven. Okay. England, Italy, pub ammo for this weekend. In 29 previous encounters, Italy have never beaten England. They've scored more than 19 points in each of their last nine tests after failing to reach that mark in their previous 17. That's a good stat. England haven't lost consecutive first and second Six Nations matches since 2005. Borthwick started on the bench that year. England missed one out of every five tackles attempted against Scotland. Sometimes stats are misleading, but that certainly didn't help their cause. So... England to bounce back or Italy to make history, Mystic Mike? Um, <laughs> I think uh, Italy are going to give it a good go, but England have to win. And I think the interesting thing about Italy is can they back up another yes. fantastic performance away from home at Twickenham? So I'm going to give... History I, would suggest that they don't often yeah, do that. Yes. So I would say that England are going to win. I think it will still be, it won't be a runaway, but I'm going to give England by seven also. Okay. Do you want to chip in on that? Hi. You're DJing. I am DJing at half time. Oh, actually, England are going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's going to join on, nice time. And, um, um, everyone's would join you like nice to say how we all did in round one? We've got over 2,000 people playing in our game. It's still, feel free to join. Yeah. Pets win prizes and all that, I think. Or prizes win pets, I don't know. Go on. Do you want to tell everyone how we did? I was 759th out of our 2,220 people playing the game. <laughs> James was a below average 1,267th. Could do better, just like I'll your report card. I'll be honest with you, I'm not like even sure I did card. this. I think someone did it for me. <laughs> just, so. like your, <laughs> just like your report card. And Alex, did you actually do it any of it or yeah you know you... i went big oh, you i went, went wales big. by two england by eight and italy by one well it got you five from the bottom <laughs> at 2215th position england went up by eight and i thought off we go and yeah. then they dropped the restart five and in italy bottom, were up like by two school. with seven minutes to go i had england by eight did so, you yeah and what did wales, i have wales was a hail mary what did i have whoever did it for me <laughs> 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 joking um <laughs> Yeah, fifth from bottom is not a great half term but, report, but, but we can only go you up. Can, yes. You're at or you the, go down and become bottom. bottom. Yeah. If you become no, bottom, I can't go down. You if you, do, you remember, bottom. do you remember we were talking about Uber ratings and how I'm actually trying to get the lowest Uber rating possible? Yes. I'm now going to see if I can come 2220th. I've gone Italy by 95 this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that just would be imagine, amazing. Yeah. Just imagine it comes in on the money. <laughs> oh my would God. you, Adam, yeah. believe it? Would you? Uh, yeah. You would be missed. Wales by 100. And, f and France are going to win by 72. <laughs> okay. Um, should we Sorry. do the details? You do come and join us because we're on. It's fun. It's good fun. Yeah. Um, so, what yeah. You get if you, you so, complete it. So, Alex, yes, you, you are very close to bottom. Best of luck yeah. on this. As per. But there is an, a well named Ross Lucky who is sitting top of the leaderboard after round one. So, well done him. Performer he should be so. Of the week. He should be so. Is this what we've got Ross, to Ross. it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, remember, you have really powered down because we've spoken about rugby this week. It's it's embarrassing. No, he, frankly. He, he wasted a lot. He, you know, he, you know went back, he went back to his his Japan days. He's milked himself too much at the start. You know when, when your iPhone just powers down, yeah. it just says your battery with. I've got to drive red. to Leeds. Right. So shut anyway, up. Anyway, and we'll wrap this up quickly. Re reminder: if you haven't signed up yet, you still can. You'll also get the chance to get a shout out on the pod. <gasps> Head over to superbrew.com forward slash GBR and please get involved. Simon Middleton has stood down. Um, it's been a, a long and a hugely successful Yeah, that, a career. coach who does the right thing after after a World Cup. Yeah. Time for new blood, Less I think. New blood. Um, I wonder who will be. He's going to do the 2023 TikTok Women's Six Nations, but obviously he's had a lot of silverware along the way. Guided England to their record-breaking 30-match winning run, two Rugby World Cup finals in 2017 and 2022. Uh, he's been with the RFU since 2014 and led the women's sevens on the World Series as well. I see what he's done there, hasn't he? Thought he was going to retire on a, as a World World Cup winner. Finished on a Grand Slam. No, yeah, I'll do it. He doesn't want to finish on a losing game. Be see good what he's to done see there. 
England's Wise Red man. Roses Clever. claim some silverware in this year's Six Nations. But well done. Does that mean if they, if well, thank you to for whatever Liverpool. chance they lose to France in the Six Nations, you'll stay on? Yeah, we'll stay on another one. Series. The TikTok uh, <laughs> Autumn International. He's announced TikTok, well, Actually, I'm, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> Tell uh, World Cup 2025, he's still here. Five Six Nations titles and four Grand Slams. That is a, that's a juicy trophy. That's unbelievable. Well done, Simon Middleton. That's it from us. I think we've sort of toured a little bit. We've got into the weeds. I'm not sure we've produced much clarity, but hey, it's the good, the bad, and the rugby. I'm not sure Has what else you expect. Huge drive. I'm going to miss my train. So yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to The Lock-In if you haven't already. These two rambling on on this week's show, an extra pod that we put out most weeks just for the super fans. Uh, do go and subscribe to that via Apple if you would like to do that. Merch on the website for the super fans, as always. Thank you to Shara Kilgallen, our ever patient producer. Miss GBNR is a Folding Pocket production. See you next week. Enjoy the rugby. Bye for now.